Whenever you see a Warner ladder, you compelled to check the top and do some dancing? Yeah, yeah. I, I usually practice every night, to be honest with you. And uh, I embarrassed myself one time for the NABC, and that'll be it, you know. But uh, I was fun. I do a lot of stupid things. I was what kind of relationship do you and Tony have? Yeah. Well, you know, I've known Tony, uh, God, before he was a college player, you know. He's, he used to work at Uncle's camp and known his dad and played against him when he was at St. Um, or Stevens Point, I should say, and, uh, you know, followed Tony was at Green Bay. We played him with Steve Smith when I was an assistant. And then I watched his career go, and uh, great kid, great guy, um, did a heck of a job everywhere he's been. And uh, and his dad's, a, you know, one of the best coaches, coaches, in, I think, all of the land in, in his time. Last Where question is for me, do you think that he's kind of building a program that has similar principles that you have? It seems like the gritty Midwestern hard work is seen when he's trying to bring to Charlottesville. Yeah, I think there's no question. Uh, you know, he's doing it with good players, but he doesn't have everybody's McDonald's all Americans. He's he's doing it with his defense and his toughness. I mean, they are a tough, good defensive team. And uh, as the old adage goes, defense usually wins championships. And so when that's a good staple to have. And if you can uh, build on that, you're always going to be in games. And when they're giving up 55 points a game, um, you're always going to be in games. And then you know, you got to have some things fall your way, but that gives you a fighting man's chance. Now, what offensively makes... speaking, facing a team that's so defensively structured, how do you attack that as far as the possessions are concerned? Well, you know, we've, it's not like we haven't played against teams like that. Of all the conferences, the Big Ten is probably known for a more possession conference. It's changing a little bit now with us, Michigan, and even Wisconsin this year, scoring in the high 70s. Uh, but, uh, you know, I... We're going to try to run. I mean, I know that's what they take away. That's one of their strengths. But we can play half court too. I mean, we we can play that kind of a ball. We especially with Dawson and Appling both playing well now. I mean, I think that gives us uh, a little bit more insight than we've had uh, up up until the last couple of weeks. You know, we were a little light on our feet in there for a while, but I think we've regained that, which helps. And I think we run enough stuff that we can get guys open for shots. And, so, you know, until you play it, I guess you don't know. But uh, I think we have played some pretty good defensive teams in our league, and I've played a lot of good defensive teams over the last couple of years. Tom, when you get to this stage in the Sweet 16, this level here at Madison Square Garden, when you have experience, does that, does that count for something? You know, unfortunately, I don't get to play the game. But, but I mean, your team, yeah, I suppose. I, I think it does help a little bit. I can tell them what to expect. You know, I... I still remember my first Sweet 16 or Final Four, you know, where I didn't know if I was on foot or horseback, and uh, <laughs> that probably didn't help my team, you know. But I think that experience helps some, at least in the preparation. But once the ball's tossed, you know, it's dog eat dog. Everybody, you know, is in the same boat, and uh, you know, I don't know if it helps them. But I, there's a comfort level on how we do things, from how we go to the hotel to the tickets to the game prep to the prep for the next games. Uh, that I think you, you gain over a period of time, but uh, I don't know if it puts you that far ahead. It's just comforting for me. You guys are 19-0 and 0 when BJ scores seven or more points. What does that say? It, seem, it says that uh, you reporters come up with a lot better things than I do. You know, what are we when I wear a pink tie and with purple? And, uh, <laughs> well, you wore a pink tie against Harvard, socks? didn't you? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I don't mean to be a smart aleck about that. I... I I just think it's amazing, you know, if, if you're leading at halftime, if you're not. I mean, all those things sound good, but you get this far, and uh, the building, the tie, the socks, or the the other things, uh, I don't think matter as much because you're playing against other top-notch teams. You know, if you looked at their team and went the same way, you know, they're, it doesn't matter who scores, they're 19-1 and one in the last 20 or 18-1 and one in the last 19 games, so... Um, there's always things like that you can come up with. I, I wish they mattered. In other words, if BJ gets eight in the first half, I think I'll just go eat popcorn with everybody and uh, enjoy the win, you know. Any extra pressure knowing that the commander-in-chief has chosen you guys to win it all? You know, I'd have to say a little bit, you know. I mean, uh, especially since he's such a basketball, knowledgeable person and, uh, 
but I, I took the opposite approach. My team, what a privilege, what an honor, what a what a neat thing that uh, you got to pick somebody, and uh, he's not picking for the wrong reasons. He's, you know, there's a lot of teams that are capable of getting there, and there's probably some teams that are capable of winning it. And to think we're one of those that is good enough that the president of the United States would pick you, um, you know, that'll go down. I'll, I'll keep that little segment of TV in my. And when I got my grandkid there, I'll say, hey, <laughs> president picked us. How you like that? Uh, Dad, Grandpa, you got beat by 30. I, I know, but he picked us anyways. Can you talk to Keith Applin's 